Hello, I'm Alex Romano and um, this is my review of Dolce & Gabbana, Dolce & Gabbana, Pour Homme. Um, this is um, kind of a personal review to me I guess because Dolce & Gabbana are my favourite, uh, not designer clothes wise, but they're my favourite designer perfume wise. They seem to me, everything they create I seem to like. <clears throat> they do have this kind of luxuriousness about them and I don't know they just tend to choose compositions that I really really like but anyway um, this was their first fragrance uh, it came as a pour femme and it came as a pour on and it's just called Dolce & Gabbana um, the red one which is the, the female one just happens to be I think one of the greatest masterpieces ever made in perfumery which has now been relaunched as something else and for the purpose of this review this one has been reformulated, um, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but yeah, it's it's it was their first fragrance. It's an aromatic forger. It came out in 1994. The 90s to me are a golden age of perfumery. It's when things were made amazingly. It was kind of perfumery was becoming. I'm not don't want to waffle on too much, but perfumery was was becoming a little bit more diverse. Everything was not smelling so classic anymore but it was still really good quality and as of late it's changed but um, yeah this is um, this is D&G Dolce & Gabbana Pour On uh, I'll show you the box, I always do, if you don't know me already this is, I kind of follow the same format to keep a pattern, it just keeps it easier for me to do but uh, it comes in a blue velvet box bit of a sign of luxury there Dolce & Gabbana, you know, they, I reckon I, they're kind of known for luxury aren't they and um, this fragrance, when it first came out, to me, and still is, probably in my top five men's fragrances ever. Uh, aromatic Forgere, the class that it's in, is something that's... Aromatic Forgeres have been made since, oh God, decades and maybe even centuries ago. It's a kind of formula that follows this kind of herbal, um, kind of lavender-based masculine kind of smell and this one to me is my favourite of that kind um, so yeah I'll show you the, the box and the bottle if you haven't seen it already um, I will say as I'm showing you it this has been reformulated keeps happening to me it's a massive bugbear of mine um, companies keep reformulating their fragrances due to I don't know what component issues um, rules and regulations uh, and this one I'm not going to say has been ruined, but it's definitely been changed. So if you know this fragrance already and you're sitting there with a bottle of it, I'll tell you the differences. The box is the same, it's a blue velvet box. The difference between them, uh, the original formula, which came out in 1994 and only recently has disappeared, had, it was a sticker, it was like a silver sticker that you could literally peel off. Uh, and the lid was the same, but if you see this lid, it's kind of transparent. Where before it was like a matte blue, uh, like very dark navy blue lid that was kind of matte and you couldn't see through it. So if you're sitting there holding on to one of those, hold on to it, wear it properly because it's kind of disappeared now and I can't find it anywhere, apart from places like eBay, which is ridiculously expensive. Um, I had it before and I used it up quickly because I got bored of it. Then I repurchased thinking I was getting the good one and it turns out I got this. Still similar, not quite the same. So anyway, the notes of this fragrance, um, it, it's really got a huge array of interesting notes. Um, obviously aromatic is something that's more herbal. Uh, Forger is kind of like a cla classic gentleman's fragrance but this one to me is a real modern twist on something like that and that's why I fell in love with it. I usually review women's fragrances if you don't know me already but I do have some real gems that I consider amazing male fragrances and this is one of them in the past. So the top notes, um, you've got lemon, you've got clary sage, bergamot, orange, lavender, Mandarin, uh, tarragon, and neroli. So the top notes of it, as you can already tell, kind of herbal citrus notes going on there. The heart notes um, contains geranium, 
one of my favourite smells in perfumery, although it's really overpowering. Rose, jasmine, not often found in men's fragrances, but love the fact that it's in this. Pepper, violet, uh, which doesn't actually really create a fragrance in the natural world, but they kind of recreate it for fragrance purposes. Violet's very powdery and soft and absolutely stunning. Cinnamon and coriander, so that's like a very spicy floral heart. Then the base, you've got cedarwood, musk, tobacco, amber, tonka, kumarin and sandalwood. Kumarin is like a kind of different take on cumin. I probably should research a bit more about that one, but I didn't. Um, but yeah, so what I normally do in my reviews, if you don't know already, is I have it drying on this hand and I'll, I will spray it fresh on this hand just so it gives you a kind of contrast because fragrances change. I feel like I repeat myself sometimes, but I don't know if you're watching my reviews for the first time, so. Um, yeah, so what I'll say about this fragrance is, um, what strikes me about it is, yes, it's herbal, but lavender plays a, a massive part in this, and I actually study natural perfumery now. I'm doing it as a course. I hope to qualify in a year or two's time. But recently I studied lavender and actually went into depth about what it actually smells like. And lavender to me is so multifaceted and bendable that it can smell different in depending on what it's put with, which is true of most notes. But lavender in this is a, is a main player. Um, lavender is spicy, it's herbal, it's kind of dry smelling, uh, it's very pungent and in this it's it's like the main player but it's surrounded by so many other beautiful things. Um, this fragrance, I'm, I'm trying not to reference the original one because I'm, I'm smelling this one but I'm kind of, you know how you can conjure a memory of a friend's face in your mind? If I said like your best friend, you would think of that person's face. I'm conjuring the, the smell of the original in my mind and I know that it was a lot more complex and rich and luxurious and smoother and everything, better basically. But the, it, this one is still, it's still the essence of the fragrance, but it's kind of like it's lost a few meat meaty bits of it, it's like it's the bones of it. Either they've taken some bits out or they've scrimped on the quality of their ingredients. My list of uh, notes is based on I think the original so correct me if I'm wrong I don't know but the main overall feel of it is a very, it's lavender but it's very herbal on top of it. You've got a lot of kind of herbal citruses, bergamot and clary sage. Bergamot is a very leafy citrus and then clary sage is smells to me almost like tea um, so it kind of has a very it's a very masculine citrusy lavender at first and it's it's really nice it's it's unusual it's different and I just I commend D&G for making something outstanding in the way of difference I've not smelt an aromatic fougere that's like this so I absolutely love it. So you've got coriander, you've got pepper, um, they're both kind of, pepper is a very obviously a peppery and spicy note and it's used a lot in male fragrances now, kind of like um, Carolina Herrera, she's got a really really peppery one and Bang by Marc Jacobs and oh, there's, there's quite a few I can, uh, I can think of that have got pepper in but the pepper in this is probably, I would say, ignore it. It's not a peppery fragrance. It's more herbal, um, citrusy, and it's got geranium and violet give it this gorgeous kind of smoothness and this, it, but it's an undertone of smoothness. You're immediately hit with, with the spices and the, the kind of lavendery herbalness of it. But the undertone of this fragrance, which has kind of been lost in the original, it has a smoothness to it. It's got tonka, it's got amber in it, it's got things that really round out a fragrance. And I hate to refer to the original, but maybe you're watching this and you've got the original. The original, when it dried, used to have, it's, it's a complex, but it used to have this real smooth sexiness to it. 
where this is more stringent, it's sharper, it's a lot more herbal, it's a lot more lavendery, where the other one felt like it almost had a tinge of vanilla in it. And it's really frustrating because I wish I could find the original, but I can't. Um, but yeah, I would say the woodsiness of it is probably not so pronounced. Um, the fact that it's got um, sandalwood in it and cedar, woods normally really prevail in a fragrance when it comes to the base, but the reformulation unfortunately doesn't showcase it that much. It's, it's a very difficult one for me to describe because I like it so much and it is so unique, but that's my take on it. Um, it's it's an eau de toilette, as I should have said at the beginning because I normally say that. The eau de toilette was original as well, but that used to be like an eau de parfum. It would literally last all day and more. It was one of those lingering gorgeous scents. This one still does, but it stays so much more close to the skin. So this is the bottle. If you can find the one with the sticker on it, you're on to a winner, so keep hold of it. I'm going to probably use mine up now because I'm slightly disappointed but as an outstanding men's fragrance love it to death um, hard to describe but smell it and see what you think if you like my reviews as always subscribe I'm Alex Warno and I'll speak to you guys soon thanks bye bye